Hi everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to the man cave on a particularly cold December day. So about two weeks ago, my BMW R1250 GS behind me here, which is about seven months old, got it from new, done about 2,900 miles. It decided to take on the persona as I braked and came to a stop at a junction. It decided to sound like a five-year-old who's never played a violin before, but has decided to pick that violin up and play it really badly in your house. So it drove me absolutely nuts, i.e. as you came to a halt. So I decided to do something about it. And what I've done, I've taken the front calipers off, given a good old clean and taken the rear caliper off as well given that a good old clean. So big disclaimer, I'm not a qualified vehicle technician. I like to do things as a bit of a DIY uh, mechanic, shall we say. So this is just a video of me taking the calipers off, cleaning them, and then putting them back on. So it's not showing you how to do it. It's just showing you how I've done it, if that makes sense. So that's my disclaimer. Uh, if you've got any problems with your brakes, go and see a qualified vehicle technician. So a couple of days ago, I took the front calipers off, took the rear caliper off, gave them a good old clean, refitted everything, and I'm happy to announce that that five-year-old violinist has now left the building and my brakes are now super quiet. I did look on the internet, all the YouTube videos on how to clean the brake calipers on your BMWs. But to be honest, I just contacted my service manager, spoke to them and they said, the age of your bike, you don't have to use any copper grease on the back of the pads. You don't have to use any grease on the caliper pins. Take them out, give them a good old clean and refit them and you should be good to go. So that is basically what I've done. But this is just a video of me cleaning my brake calipers and putting them back. No more than that. So things for the job then, a selection of clean cloths, some paper towel, some washing up liquid, and if you want it, some brake cleaner, this is quite expensive and you can get through it very quickly. It's about eight or nine pounds a tin. Torque wrench, some sockets, and a good old trusty toothbrush, and some pliers, and a couple of sockets uh, for the front caliper bolts, 13 mil. Uh, which is what they are, but actually the half inch one works actually better. It fits on a bit more snugly. So that's what you need to take the front calipers off. And also you've got grub screws on the front caliper, as you can see here, and to take those off, they look like a reverse Torx head. To take those off, a six millimeter socket will get those off, no problem whatsoever. So let's take the front calipers off then. First things first, if your calipers are covered in mud or really dirty, just go and wash them. Secondly, to avoid any damage from the caliper swinging and accidentally hitting the wheel itself, causing damage potentially, just get a towel and then just put it between the tire and the mud guard. I think the service manual does say put a load of tape around here, but that's what I did. So what you gotta do now is just undo the clips here for the sensor cable. And then with your 13 mil or half inch socket, just crack the caliper bolts. There's one and there's two. Next thing you need to just crack these because on the other side here, you've got a retaining E-clip, I think they're called. So if you undo these now, that E-clip is gonna potentially fly off and then you might never be able to find it again. So with your six millimeter socket, just pop it over the top and then just undo it about an eighth of a turn just to loosen it. As I say, you don't want to undo it because that circlet will pop off. And there we go, so that's just loosened. So the towel's still in place so we don't cause any accident or damage to the brake caliper or the rim of the wheel. And then we're just gonna take the bolts off. There's the first one and there's the second one. And it's a good idea just to lay them out on a bit of cardboard or something and just label them so you know which one goes back into which caliper hole. And all I'm gonna do now is just remove the caliper from the brake disc, just pull it and then a little bit of a twist and then it comes away, as simple as that. So what we've gotta do next is just remove these E-clips from the inside of the caliper and then that will allow us to just remove these pins fully and then the pads will just drop out from the bottom of the haze caliper. 
So the difference between the Hayes caliper and the Brembo caliper, basically the Hayes caliper is a two piece unit, so it splits in two, and the Brembo caliper is a one piece unit. And to change the brake pads of the Brembo caliper, you can leave the caliper on the fork itself, and then you can just remove the brake pads from the top without removing the caliper. The Hayes caliper, sadly, we have to go through all this rigmarole of taking the caliper off of the fork and then taking the pins out and then dropping the pads from the bottom of the brake caliper unit. So to remove the Eclipse, you can go on the internet and search how to remove these Eclipse, but I've got this little plastic kitchen utensil thing from making cakes or something, and that's pretty good. So all I'm gonna do is just put the flat blade along the slide here, and then just push down and towards my thumb, and then that just gently pops that little E-ring off, put that somewhere safe, and there it goes. That's the trickiest part of the job. And go and put these somewhere safe. So taking those clips off doesn't take too long to do, it's a little bit fiddly, but that's the best solution I could come up with without scratching the back of the caliper. So taking my six millimeter socket, just pop that on there. So as I undo the caliper pin, you might get a little bit of resistance. So just push on the underside of the brake pads and that pushes against the top spring or clip here. And then that just takes the pressure off the pin and then you can just remove that. And then what I suggest you do together with the caliper bolts is put them next to each other so that this one goes next to that one and then the bottom one goes next to that caliper bolt. So keep them in order. And then the same for the bottom caliper pin. And then that pin then comes out. And then my fingers are on the underside of the caliper and then the brake pads will just drop out. And it's very important just to remember which way round they go. So when I removed them a few days ago, I just wrote an L on the back side of one of them. So I know that's the left brake pad and then obviously that's the right brake pad. So all I've done next is just suspended the caliper that just takes the weight off the brake line and some people use a bungee cord but I haven't got bungee cord and then taken my wife's finest washing up bowl, filled it with washing up liquid and some warm water and I'm just resting it on a plastic box just to give me a bit more height and then we're going to get a toothbrush and start cleaning the caliper. You might want to consider wearing gloves for this bit when you're cleaning your dirty brake calipers. So there we go, toothbrush. I've got my warm soapy water in the bowl and it's just a straightforward case of getting in there and cleaning the pistons from the top and the bottom. Get right in there. And just take your time. You can also use disc brake cleaner. Give it a good old shake and then use it sparingly. My caliper's already cleaned anyway, so, but yeah, you can use this stuff and then just keep cleaning it. So take your time cleaning the pistons. It's quite therapeutic. I mean, you don't have to have it suspended if it makes it easier but you just don't want to put too much pressure on the brake line there, although it is a metal braided hose. So give it a good old clean with the soapy water. And then what you can do is just pump the pistons out just to get behind the pistons, but be careful not to pump the pistons out so far that you're going to pop them. So be really careful, folks. So if you've got a stuck piston, you can just hold the other pistons in and then try and work the piston free by pumping the front brake or put something in here. But be very careful, you don't want to pop those pistons out because that'll be a, a totally different video. All I'm going to do now is just pump the front brake and get those pistons out a bit more. Just keep checking them though. You don't want them to pop out. So 
So a couple of things then, if you've got a piston that's stuck, won't come out, you can just carefully push the other piston in and see if that will move it like it's done in this case. There we go, so all those pistons are moving fine actually. So if you've got a piston that doesn't move, what you can do is just sort of wedge your thumb in there against the other three, go up to the lever and then carefully pump the brake lever to see if you can get that piston to move. Which we have done in this case. And then you can get your toothbrush and carry on cleaning around there and give it a good old clean. So I've pushed all these pistons back, so I'm just going to pump the brake lever to get them all to come out, and then I'll clean all the way around them. I've just pumped the brake lever carefully, coming back to the, the caliper, just to see how far out the pistons are, and I can continue just with that toothbrush, just getting behind the exposed part of the piston. Some people actually use a, a clean shoelace, and just to bring it around the back, and just to clean the back side of the piston, but with this one, you can still come in from the underside and give the pistons a good old clean from the top. So the caliper's nice and clean now, just gonna give it a final squirt with your brake cleaner. So the whole caliper is nice and clean. And then with a clean cloth, just get in there and give it a good old wipe. So that's a nice job there, it's nice and clean inside. Just be careful that you don't pump that front brake too far that the pistons pop out. You're in a whole world of doo-doos if that happens. So just be very careful. Mine have come out about five millimeters and I would be a little bit scared to bring them out any more than that. So five millimeters will do me. And then what you can do, is you can just push the pistons in and out just to make sure they're moving nicely, which they are. So now I'm just going to clean the top clip that sits up here. So again with your hot soapy water and if it's particularly dirty just give it a good old squirt of the brake cleaner and then dry it. Caliper pins again give them a good old squirt if required and give them a nice clean and then just dry them off, remembering which pin goes where. And the next thing I'm going to do with the brake cleaner is just clean the brake pad, get rid of all the dust and grime and contaminant. It's quite nasty stuff, so try not to breathe any of it in. And just remember which is the left and which is the right, and then dry them off with a nice clean cloth. So next thing then, I've put the bike on my front paddock stand and what I'm going to do is just clean the rotor discs. So nice clean cloth and then just clean the discs. And you can see the muck that comes off. And just rotate the cloth every now and again. So that is the cleaning stage finished folks. So what I'm going to do now is just reassemble everything. So first things first, I'm just going to push the pistons back in. So gloves are now gone, drop the bike from the front stand, turn the wheel, put the towel back, and then I've just released the caliper from the supporting string. So start to reinstall stuff now. So we've got a nice clean caliper. I'm going to call that a spring, so got a front got arrow on here that's facing forward and the best way I found was just to bring it in from the top, feed it through, turn the caliper over and then push it down until you hear it click. Can be a little bit fiddly. Right, and that is on properly. And then the next thing with your left pad and your right pad, just pop them in. These are all nice and clean, obviously. And try not to touch the surface of the brake pad as you've got oil on your fingers and that may contaminate them. Again, this is a little bit fiddly to put them back. I do wish they were Brembo's. 
So the next thing we have to do is fit these caliper pins back. So this is a bit of a fiddly job. So I'm just keeping the brake pads from falling out with my fingers at the bottom there, just pushing against them. And then we just feed the pins in and just a bit of a waggle. It is a bit of a faff. Just try not to get your fingers onto the pads themselves because of the grease on your fingers and feed it through and then at some point you're just going to feel the thread start to bite but it is a bit of a faff and then we take our six mil socket and then just screw the caliper pin through just enough that the recess on the end of the pin just comes through the other end there and that'll just make putting the e-clip on a lot easier and then we'll do the same for the second pin. Again, just screw the second pin up just enough so the recess in the pin just sits through the hole. And then what we have to do is then take our E-clips and then just push them on to the recess on the pin that we've pushed through. There we go, that's one on. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Don't want to lose these. Take, take the second one and then just pop that on as well. Well, they are quite fiddly. And that is both those E clips are on now. And then what we can do is just do these up. I'll put the torque setting of these on the screen, but I haven't got, I think it's six or eight newton meters, but I haven't got a torque wrench that will go that low. So I've just knit them up as what I think is right. So that is one complete caliper. And the next thing we're just gonna put the caliper over the brake disc. And you've got the two dowels which the brake caliper just slots into. And then we've got the sensor cable here. We take the caliper bolt, remembering which one went where. So I've taken the tail away, put the front of the bike up on a front paddock stand. So I could actually just torque these straight up to 38 newton meters. But I want to make sure that the caliper, although it sits on dowels, these are done up hand tight. And there is a little bit of movement, even though it is sat down on these dowel pins. So there is a little bit of rocking movement here. So what I'm going to do is just apply the front brake so the pistons push out and then spin the front wheel and then apply the brake and then that way I'm going to ensure that I get the perfect alignment of the disc and the pads. There's a well-known bloke called Dave Moss and this is how he aligns the pads to the rotor. And then what I'm going to do is pump the brake lever so the pistons find their natural position against the disc. So just pumping the brake lever so the pistons come out and push the pads against the front disc. So there we go. And then because I can't reach my arms aren't long enough. I've got a zip tie just to put around the front brake lever. So what I'm gonna do is just spin the wheel and apply the brake. And then with that zip tie, just hold the brake in position and then come and tighten up those caliper bolts. And then I'll torque them up to 38 newton meters. And I can release the zip tie now from the front brake. And then finally one torque wrench set to 38 newton meters. There's one. And there's two. And the final thing for me to do is just put these sensor clips back around the brake line. There's one. And there's two. Have a quick check, make sure I haven't left anything out. And then just spin the wheel, make sure it all looks good and sounds good. Nothing wrong with that. That's pretty good. Well, that's it folks, we come to the end of the video. I do hope you found it of some entertainment value. If you've got any comments to make, please put them in the comment section down below. The left-hand caliper took me about 20 minutes, the right-hand caliper, exactly the same procedure, and again, 20 minutes. The only difference is you don't have the sensor cable on the right-hand caliper. Eventually, there will be a part two to this video covering the rear 
caliper removal, cleaning and reinstallation thereof. So look out for that in the not too distant future. I'll put it in the description box down below when it's done and there eventually will be a card up here somewhere. So my brakes are nice and quiet. The screeching violinist has left the building, I'm happy to say. So I'm happy that everything is done up properly. The only grease, shall we say, that I've used is the copper grease on the caliper pins so it makes it easier to remove them. Other than that, I've not used any lubricants anywhere else. Nothing on the back of the brake pads, on the pins, nothing. Just giving it a real good clean. That's all it needed in the 2,900 miles that the bike has done. It just needed a good clean and it's always nice to know how to remove the calipers and clean everything. So I'm really happy with that. What I will do is just go out for a quick test ride, make sure everything works. Uh, as I've <laughs> the second time I've removed everything for the purpose of the video so I'll be doing that tomorrow and the pads and the discs weren't glazed there was no need for me to get any sandpaper out whatever doing any of that kind of stuff so it was just dirty really causing the squeakiness so as ever ride safe and we'll see you again soon in the next video and cheerio for now